Mark Rogers TV headed to the Pac-12 to talk some UCLA football with Mike Regalado of Gojo Bruin. Mike, it's always a pleasure to have you on. How you been? Good, Mark. How are you? Football's back, huh? Just fine. Yeah, football. They're playing football as we speak. So we'll knock this out and head to the TV set. But, uh, of course, the game that you're extremely concerned about is that Texas A&M game in hostile territory coming up on uh, Saturday afternoon. So let's start with the Texas A&M game and uh, your thoughts about going into that kind of hostile environment, over 100,000 people, SEC-type rabid fan base uh, there at Texas A&M. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. I had a couple friends that canceled because, you know, <laughs> 2 o'clock in the middle of Texas uh, weather, and it's supposed to be a thunderstorm. So, you know, hope, hope it doesn't get canceled. It's, you know, bad enough to get canceled. But anyway, just, you know, the game itself is going to be – quite exciting because it pits uh, the pa a Pac-12 team versus an SEC team, um, you know, one of two. You know, USC, Alabama are going to be going at it later in the day, but uh, between UCLA and Texas A&M, um, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting on UCLA's offensive side because they switched things up. They are running more power. So that's going to be really interesting going up against uh, – Texas A&M's defensive line with Garrett Miles and um, I'm forgetting the other uh, t tackle's name, but uh, they have some really, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, those guys are fantastic up front. Uh, the thing is they're linebackers, you know, they're, you know, good, but they're a little questionable. Um, last year they had pretty bad uh, run defense. So um, what UCLA should do is, you know, mix it up a bit with the pass. I mean, you don't want to waste Josh Rosen's arm, but you also want to, uh, you know, utilize it that, in, you know, in different ways. But seeing as how the run defense was, you know, not stellar last year, uh, UCLA should go to their power formation, try to run, run, run at them. Not only do you get, uh, you know, up to speed with the, the new offense, but hey, it could become, you know, <laughs> more successful than you expected. So, um, you know, that, that that's going to be interesting uh, just to see how UCLA operates. On the defensive side, um, UCLA had pretty bad run defense too, but they're going up against UCLA's former uh, offensive coordinator, Noel Mazzoni, who is known for a very uh, fast tempo uh, based uh, spread offense. So uh, is the UCLA defense going to be ready for Mazzoni? Is ready? Is Mazzoni going to be ready for the defense? That's going to be an interesting matchup, uh, you know, on many levels too, because Jim Mora and, and Noel Mazzoni are friends. So um, just to see, you know, who outfoxes the other is, is going to be, um, that's going to be an interesting battle. You know, protecting the quarterback is always paramount, but I think especially in this game in a hostile environment, Josh Rosen needs time to set up in the pocket and have a chance to deliver. And with the speed rush that Texas A&M provides on the outside, it's going to be imperative for your tackles to do their job in creating the pocket. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the thing about the tackles is they're not deep. So if they go down, we have two really good tackles. If they go down, that's, spells trouble <laughs> but um you know Connor mcdermott returned for his final season he's going to be very important on the blind side uh very good uh it's going you know, what i want to see is how they you know he's he's going to be an important piece to protecting rosen but who else are they going to bring you know those, those defensive ends are pretty are pretty vicious and um you know they're going to need some you know added power so you know obviously depending on what kind of play they're going to do you know, they're going to have to limit those rushes. So um, the tackles are important. And the other one, uh, Colton Miller, he just had such a very up-and-coming season last year. So he he earned that uh, right tackle spot pretty quickly. Your most dynamic and known players on offense outside of Rosen are gone from last year's team and Paul Perkinson, obviously. Jordan Payton, very productive players, uh, rank in the elite of UCLA wow. history at those positions. Are you comfortable with young running backs, young wide receivers uh, taking on, again, a very good team, but especially hostile environment first game? Yeah, the, the receivers I'm really looking forward to because they're, they have a lot of young, talented players. And specifically this year, they have some speed on their side. It's one thing they never really had. They didn't have a you know uh, a receiver that can just you know put the afterburners on and head downfield. But now they uh, uh, they have about three. Um, Theo Howard, five star freshman. Uh, he's going to be an interesting uh, you know, specimen to watch. Very quick, very athletic. Um, Kenny Walker, who his problem he he used to be the 
I mean, he still might be. He's He was the fastest uh, runner on the UCLA football team, but he had hands of stone. Last year, he improved that, and if he can develop that, he, if he can be a better uh, pass catcher, he's going to be a, a weapon too. And then there's Ishmael Adams, uh, who's converted defensive back. He's he, he's elusive. He was uh, put on uh, uh, kick returns for a reason. He has breakaway speed. He can turn on a dime, and to have that as a receiver, uh, apparently one of his things is that he uh, – he can break away a lot easier than, than other receivers. So to get that separation, to get himself in space, that's just going to help him out on the receivers. Um, for the running backs, they have three really good running backs. Soso Jamabo, uh, Bolo Olorunfumni, and Nate Starks. All of them could potentially start, um, but it's going to be Soso. He is just, he, he, he's just, you know, that much above the other two, but at the same time, you know, he, he'll, he'll, he's just going to start. There might be times where, uh, Bolu or Nate just break out or you know they're on a roll so that it the running game I'm not worried about at all Mike you mentioned the issues last season with run defense we also know that you basically lost your best player on all three levels of the defense last year uh, and Eddie Vanderdose you're, you're going to see him for the first time since last season's opener that's going to be a welcome sight yeah I think he's uh, hungry and he's going to try to make a point of helping to improve the run defense. Uh, he, he was just an awesome, awesome <laughs> football player. Uh, the only thing I regret about him going down is, is uh, seeing him and uh, Kenneth Clark, who was the uh, other defensive tackle last year, play together. We didn't get to see that, obviously, after the first uh, um, the game. But if that happened, uh, Vanderdoes might be to the NFL and we might not have him here. So, you know, this is, you know, he's going to look to have a big year because, you know, he's a, uh, uh, going to be available for the draft next year. So, you know, this is his year to shine. Mike, I was not impressed with Trevor Knight uh, in the season leading up to the Sugar Bowl in which they beat Alabama or since that in losing his job to Baker Mayfield. So he's 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 not been bad, but a pretty pedestrian quarterback in terms of production. But he had one shining moment. Uh, you'll remember a couple of years ago against Alabama in the Sugar Bowl where he just lit up the tide and they pulled off a major upset down by a couple uh, an underdog by two touchdowns in that game. So you don't want to see that Trevor Knight. If you see the the guy that we've seen for a couple of seasons, uh, he's decent, but not overwhelming. Yeah, from a UCLA perspective, there are many questions about it. I mean, he, you know, he he was perceived to be the guy after that Alabama win, and he never kind of turned into the guy. Um, he's not a bad quarterback, back, which that will really help uh, Noel Mazzoni spread offense. That's what he did with Brett Hundley. He was a, a running quarterback as well. So, it, you know, this could uh, this offense could just you know he could fit right in with it. And if if he does that, you know, that's going to be a uh, um, you know, if, if they get chemistry early, it's going to be really good for them and put a lot of pressure on the UCLA defense, which has uh, had the best pass defense last year. So if the, if uh, Knight can get his arm going, that's going to be a fun battle to watch as well. So, yeah, you kind of segue way me into what I'd like to uh, talk about next, and that's uh, UCLA fans may get sick of hearing these names if Knight's on target because Christian Kirk, 80 receptions last year, 1,000 yards as a freshman. Ricky Seals-Jones, also uh, Josh Reynolds, some of the best in the business at wide receiver. I think the wide receivers for Texas A&M against the UCLA secondary that has just been heaped in great recruiting classes uh, over a number of yeah. years. Th those athletes vying at that uh, matchup is going to be special. Yeah, it's they're deep. There are a couple positions where they're three deep. I mean, they have uh, young guys who... They could, they could take over if needed. Um, but we're going to see, uh, what is it, three out of four of the of the uh, positions are returning. Uh, Fabian Moreau, he, he was injured three games into the season last year. Um, Jaleel Wadud and uh, uh, Randall Goforth in, in the back uh, mm -hmm. at, the, at the safety spots. And Chris Rios, it could be Nate Metters. Um, and, you know, just every all of them are capable of, of, of handling their position but to go against uh receivers like this that's going to be fun because they have some really good really scary um receivers so this whole game is going to be fun to watch <laughs> every every uh, position matchup is going to be very interesting it's one of those cross-sectional rivalries or matchups, I should say, that, uh, yeah, really makes week one fun. People are talking about Florida State, Ole Miss, Alabama, USC gaining most of the spotlight, but this is an somewhat under-the-radar 
could be a down to the wire. A lot of points scored, a lot of athleticism on both sides. Texas A&M hosting UCLA should be a great one. Mike Regalado from Gojo Bruin helping us out on the Bruins and the Aggies. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks, Mark.